You thought it was just the Super Bowl, didn't you? Oh, how optimistic you were. The Falcons and failure have been joined at the hip since their conception. Let us begin. The Falcons start off as the NFL's punching bag in the late 1960s, literally one of the worst starts for a team before the Buccaneers come around. Norm Van Brocklin leads you out of the basement, and into the fringe hell that is mediocrity. It's not all bad, though. There's promise here. The Falcons go 9-5, and five and they have some good pieces on defense. Next year, you'll make the playoffs. I spoke a tad prematurely. You become a steaming pile of shit at 3-11, and 11 and your offense sets records for ineptitude. Norm Van Brocklin is shown the guillotine. Your next coach is Marion Campbell. You remain in the basement feeding off of the rats. Your defense is one of the best the game has ever seen. Too bad the Falcons couldn't score on a hooker and they don't sniff the postseason. My god, you actually did something and made the playoffs? And you won a playoff game? It only took you 12 years. You may actually win another playoff game. You're up seven at halftime. But the Cowboys come back and win in the second half. This hopefully won't become a theme with the Falcons. You're finally a Super Bowl contender with a pinnacle 12-4 season. Pro Bowl quarterback Steve Bartkowski, a dual-threat running back tandem of Willie Andrews and Lynn Kane, receiving threats Junior Miller, Alfred Jenkins, and Wallace Francis, and a strong defense. You're up by 14 in the fourth quarter against the Cowboys. Just drive it home. And it'll be Newhouse. He's in there. Eh, I'm not worried. The Falcons got a field goal in their next drive. As long as the offense keeps clicking, they're good to go. Uh, Falcons, you're gonna respond? At least try to save the game. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh fucking brutal. You're seven and six. It's time to prove your doubters wrong and avenge for last year's failure. Or just lose your last three and fail to make the playoffs. All right, you made the playoffs again. You're up by five against Bud Grant's old Vikings at the start of the fourth. Time to get revenge. You blew another lead, eh? Whatever, you got a field goal and they have to drive the length of the field. It's going to take a total collapse for them to... You blew another lead, eh? Dan Henning leads you back into the clutching arms of mediocrity. That shitty coach you had back in the mid-1970s? Let's hire him again, because why the fuck not? You get sentenced back to the basement. It's the start of a new Falcon generation led by Bad Moon Rising and Prime Time. You got back to the playoffs and actually won another playoff game. Unfortunately, you get scalped by the Redskins in the next round. This Brett Favre guy is a head case that doesn't give a shit about the game of football. Exile him to Hell on Earth, also known as Green Bay. Turns out you're mediocre again. Time to bring a jolt to the team. The cancer known as Jeff George. Andre Risen and Prime Time may be gone, but you still snuck into the playoffs. Remember that Brett Favre guy? He kicks your ass all over the field in the wildcard game. Jeff George reveals himself to be a team cancer. In other news, grass is green. You go 3-13 and 13 in the ensuing chaos. By God. You not only won another playoff game, you made the Super Bowl. Most of it is due to the Vikings choking on their own shit, but you're respectable in your own right. You're the lovable underdog, the goddamn dirty bird. Now bring that Lombardi trophy back to Atlanta. The Cinderella story strikes 12 and they get smashed by the Broncos. Better luck next year, boys. Or just go 5-11. and 11. You can do that. What you need to rush past this mediocrity is a transcendent talent. It's time to make a move. Trade a nice package to the Chargers to draft Michael Vick. Okay, you're six and four. You've got a shot at playoffs again. Never mind, they lose five of their last six. Congratulations, the Meddlesome Smith family has sold the Falcons to a Gomez Adams doubleganger. Vic's electrifying play leads you back to the playoffs in his second season. You actually beat that fucking Favre guy in a playoff game, too. Only a brick wall could stop you. Its name is the Eagles. Michael Vick is going to lead you to greatness. He gets injured, you start the season off 2-10, and ten. Dan Reeves is flogged publicly in Olympic Park, and the defense is a turnstile. Such greatness. 
Things get back on track, and you make the playoffs again. Vic emerges as one of the great runners in the league, and you put up 47 points against the Rams of all teams. Only a brick wall could stop you. Its name is the Eagles. Turns out that the team doesn't have much else besides Vic, and they're a gigantic blob of meh. That's what happens when you put all of your eggs in one basket. At least you've got him. The dude may not be the greatest thrower, but he's still one of the most electrifying players in the game. Matt Schaub is being blocked by him, so we can trade him to the Texans. You got one of the hottest coaches in college football and Bobby Petrino. This is the year. Too bad Michael Vick likes his dogfighting rings. Fucking idiot. Bobby Petrino turns out to be a complete disaster in Atlanta. Who knew that big time college coaches rarely pan out at the professional level? They go 4 and 12 on the field, but that's just like finding out you lost your remote after the goddamn house burned down. Time to get another QB in the draft. This Matt Ryan guy will do. You get back to the playoffs under his and Michael Turner's guidance. And you have another lead at halftime. Oh, you blew it? At least it was only a 3.1 this time. You finally got back to back winning seasons for the first time in franchise history? What do you want, a fucking trophy? Boom. You're Super Bowl contenders again with a 12 and 4 season. And you get completely obliterated by the Packers. One positive though, you didn't lose to that fucking Favre guy again. You do, however, get absolutely manhandled by the Giants the next year. Hot damn, 13 and 3 and at home against the 49ers with a 10 point lead at halftime. They choose to stick to the script and piss the game away. There's always next year though. Unless that next year is where the team completely falls apart and goes 4 and 12. Mike Smith is finally axed after a dismal 6 and 10 season. We don't have enough passion in our stadium. Let's just pipe in some noise to help out. Nobody's going to notice at all. You're 5 and 0 to start the year. The crystal ball predicts a future playoff berth. The crystal ball turns out to be a mirage and you lose 7 of your next 8. No playoffs for you. The Falcons shock the goddamn world and make the Super Bowl with one of the greatest offenses the league has seen since the turn of the millennium. The Patriots' time is up. It's time for Atlanta to emerge as a champion. They're doing so well right now. The Falcons have a 25-point lead in the third quarter of play. Oh, you thought I was just going to glance over this? Bitch, you don't know this channel. This is a special moment in sports. Time to amplify the pain. New England charges down the field in six minutes and James White runs into the end zone for a five-yard gain. The Falcons do fuck all on the next drive. The Patriots charge down the field but are forced to settle for a field goal after a nice red zone stand. Keep getting points, Falcons, you're still good. This is when Devontae Freeman imitates a swinging door and the Patriots get the ball back on a fumble recovery. Fucking Freeman. The Patriots strike with precision and tack eight points on the board. Damn, what a catch by Julio. This should put the game away for sure. Just run the ball, burn the clock out, and kick a field goal to end the madness. Why the fuck are you passing? Why the fuck did you just put yourselves out of field goal range? Shanahan, you arrogant fucking idiot. Oh, turns out it was premature and you got back into field goal range. There was a holding penalty. Fuck. You blow the drive and you're forced to punt. The Patriots have to drive over 90 yards though. Just stop them somewhere and you're good or allow them to convert a third and ten. Behold the glorious catch of Julian Edelman! Behold its majesty! Look at it, you filthy casuals! Behold! They drive the length of the field and tie it up with a minute to spare. The Falcons do nothing with the next drive and it goes to OT. At this point, every Falcons fan is saying, Stop it! Stop it! Please! I beg you! But I lean down and I say, the Patriots win the coin toss and proceed to pick the Falcons' defense apart for the length of the field. Oh look, a pass interference penalty.